Jeeps, Jeeps, and more Jeeps. Today's episode is all about Jeep Wranglers. Welcome to Flying Wheels. Let's get going. Hey everyone on the YouTube world, this is Craig from Flying Wheels. If you guys love anything auto related, you have stumbled across the right channel, so make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Today is all about Jeep Wranglers. You can see a Jeep Wrangler behind me and a Jeep Wrangler back there getting washed, while the one in the back is sold. The one right here is hopefully sold soon, so this video is all about how we're gonna bring this Jeep Wrangler back to life what we're gonna do to it, we're gonna give it some upgrades. I bought it at auction last week. Today I am at the auction. It is another auction day, one of my favorite days of the week because like Forrest Gump says, you never know what you're gonna get. But I'm here for Jeep Wranglers. I've been craving a Jeep Wrangler. There's a bunch of Wranglers here. So I'm gonna show you Jeep Wranglers at all. Oh, Take for Jeep Wranglers, considering what they go for is just crazy in general. But I'll give you a walk around of this video and show you everything that we're gonna do to it. So it's an 09 Jeep Wrangler X, which is like base model, vinyl, with uh, crank windows, six-speed transmission, base wheels, base soft top, no hard top. Pretty boring looking, but it's still a Jeep. Jeeps are a ton of fun. The top comes off easy. It's freaking 95 degrees right now. So if we get this thing done quick enough, it should sell pretty quickly. So I already made the call. I got some new tires, some new wheels. All I'm gonna do is go stock wheels with some bigger tires, uh, 33 inch tires, and I got a two and a half inch rough country lift kit. Cheap, inexpensive lift, easy to install. It springs, it struts, it's extensions. Pretty easy to do, so we should have it done in a few hours. On top of that, we're gonna clean it up, we're gonna buff it, we're gonna bring all of this faded plastic back to life. So you can see the plastic over here back is all faded, all faded down here. Easy, easy, easy stuff to bring back to life. Um, and like I said, I didn't pay a ton of money, but considering what Jeep Wranglers go for, I did. I paid like, I forget, like eight grand-ish, maybe seven grand, it's an 09 with 140,000 miles. I don't ever see them any less than that unless they have a couple hundred thousand miles on them. So we're gonna, I ordered all the parts. I'm gonna have Alyssa behind me start going through it once she's done that Jeep. Hi Alyssa. Hi. She's gonna go through this one for me. Uh, hopefully have it done with a week's turnaround and we have it up for sale and I think it's gonna sell much quicker the way we're finished with it versus the way it is. Obviously I could sell it the way it is, but I think it'll uh, just appeal to the masses with a lift kit, some bigger tires and just be generally more fun to sell anyway. So let's have some fun projects. So let's get the project started. So obviously I could go with something like this. It would just make the Jeep monstrous, but we're talking like 2000 versus 600, 700, 800. So, so here are the monsters going on those wheels. Maybe you're looking tired with a nice sidewall. 33 with an aggressive tread will make a significant difference with not a giant lift either. Hey, so it's turned into an episode of uh, Chatting in Cars with Craig, I guess. Well, you know the game. What am I driving? Shout it out. I'll try to give you a shout out in the next video. So obviously I can go to the tire shop and buy a set of wheels and 35s or 37s and spend $2,500 on a wheel and tire package. But that means I have to increase the price of the vehicle. So now I'm doing my time to drive to the tire shop to drop off, my time to go to the tire shop to pick them up, the installation to put them on the Jeep. All this cost me money, plus now I'm increasing the price of my wheel and tire package, which means I have to increase the price of the Jeep minimum by that much. But why are you doing anything for free? I'm not working for free. So if I'm spending 2100 on a tire package, I get to make more money off that because that's my cost. I get a discount on that stuff. So let's just say the Jeep, I could sell it for eight grand right now. I spent 2100 on a tire package. Well, now I have to sell it for 10-1 just to make the same exact amount of money that I could at eight grand. Just flip a quick, cheap Jeep. Cheap Jeep. Love saying that. So I don't do that. And I don't do TerraFlex. I don't do Fox Racing Suspension because it's a ton more money. I can get a nice lift kit on a cheap Jeep for somebody that wants a cheap Jeep with a lift kit and go buy a cheap, inexpensive factory set of 18 inch wheels, 17 inch wheels, whatever, and get a set of tires for them. So I get a set of tires, I'm gonna be at like six to $800 on tires, mounted, balanced, I'm 330 into the lift kit, it'll take my guy two hours to install it. So I'll be around $1,000 to $1,200 for a lift kit. Now I have a lifted Jeep that I can sell cheap. So I'll have a lifted Jeep Jeep. So win, win, win. If I spend more money, it means I need to ask more money, which then makes it harder for me to sell. So if I keep my cost low, I can sell it for less. 
and still have that same margin. So that's why I do what I do. Here we go, Wrangler lift kit. Assembly has begun, the wheels are coming off. New wheels, I mean, you know, original factory wheels with some general grabber, 33 inch tires. Look at the meat on those tires. There's the other one right there. So here's the problem with Wranglers. We live in New England, rust is of concern to us. So this is what the undercarriage of a Jeep Wrangler looks like for us in New England. And this is normal, this looks good for us. Frame is solid, it's not flaking and chipping, which is a great thing. Those will be gone, that right there will be gone. That right there will be gone. This is a 2009, it's 10 years old. And they look like that underneath. Oil pan's been done at least. So it's gonna be pretty neat when we're finished. If I have a 17 or an 18 Wrangler that's completely stock, I'm not gonna spend my money to go lift it and change it and customize it and hope somebody wants it the way it is. I'm gonna sell it as a stock Jeep and ask what they want. Now I can get my price for it and get whatever I need for wheels, tires, suspension, that's probably less than they would pay somewhere else. So I can still make a little bit more money on the upgrades and not charge them what a Jeep custom shop is gonna charge them. So they win, I win, it's all good, different scenario. This scenario is an easy one. I am selling a cheap lifted Jeep. Jeep. So the fun part of the Jeep Wranglers is the undercoat. I showed you what they look like underneath. Unfortunately, that's common New England wear and tear. I do it to almost every Jeep we buy. I'm gonna undercoat it. So you can see just, it's gonna take me an extra 30 minutes and maybe 40, $50 in, in like a truck bed coating. But look at the way it looks. Let me see here. Look at the way that looks now versus the before. And even going here, we'll go across the differential. Now clearly I'm not done. I'm gonna do the entire undercarriage but this is what it's gonna look like when I'm finished. So anyone that comes to buy this Jeep now is gonna see a lifted Jeep with brand new tires and completely undercoated underneath. It's gonna look awesome when we're finished. And it's just a toy. So, you know, when you a new Wrangler is 30 grand, 20 grand, I'm gonna have this one out the door for like 12.5 and it's gonna be awesome for somebody to enjoy. Look at that. That is a thing of beauty now. What a difference already. It looks amazing. Scoot on over to the back. Look at the frame, look at the suspension. We're not completely done undercoating, but I wanted to get this area out of the way so we didn't spray the suspension. Problem, I completely, completely, completely forgot. I have done these lifts three dozen times. Completely forgot that I need wheel spacers on these Jeep Wranglers. So we got the wheels on, we got the tires on, we got the suspension on, then the wheels rub. I forgot you can't use stock wheels with bigger tires, go that big, and then expect them to not touch. They did. They rub. So I got wheel spacers. 100 bucks. Amazon Prime here in two days. Wheel spacers are in. So right now you can see how cool the front end looks. Bam. Look at that. Awesome. So a completely different Jeep from when I started. And we painted the fenders over the weekend. So taped all these off. I forgot to video it. Taped all these off. We used like a truck bed coating, painted the fenders, the front bumper, all the steps, truck bed black. So it's not like it's just like spray painted black, it's texture coated. And we did the license plate mount. Fresh black again, satin, love it, looks so good. Bumper's done. Fifth tire's on, I didn't do the fifth tire size, so we're gonna put the tire cover on. But matching wheels, everything, looks awesome. So the wheel spacers showed up today, Thanks to Amazon Prime once again. Wheels are going on and we should be done. Well, here's what it looks like without wheel, spe wheel spacers. Because I forgot that it needed wheel spacers. So you can see it's a little tucked in. The rears have the wheel spacers on them already. One and a quarter inch wheel spaces on each wheel would, do the math, extend this Jeep Wrangler to make it two and a half inches wider. And obviously, the wheel spaces are hub centric, meaning the wheel sits on this little piece right here too, so it's not just resting on the lugs. Here's a vertical view looking over the fender, no wheel. These ones have wheel spacers. 
and there you go, you can see the edge of the tire. If they were sticking out any farther, they would be illegal in my state, so they have to be in line with the fender. Last day of the Jeep build, We've got our one and a quarter inch wheel spacers on every wheel, our suspension's in, our frame is done. I'm gonna cross thread these suckers with an impact on, just kidding. And we are finished. Here's an example of with and without wheel spacers. Perfectly aligned with the fender, wheel spacer. Set in. Looks like a pair of skinny legs, no wheel space. Here we go, first ride out. Now this exemplifies, freaking seatbelt. This exemplifies what a Jeep Wrangler should be and I'm gonna tell you why. I don't need the leather, I don't need the navigation, I don't need the heated seats. All those things make it a comfortable daily driver, but this is what a Jeep Wrangler should be. AC, sound bar, good tunes. That's the only options I need. Crank windows, push button door locks, a nice easy soft top. This is a Jeep Wrangler right here. Lift it up, nice big fat tires, but still a comfortable decent ride. It's not jacked up too much. I am very proud of this and someone is going to get an awesome Jeep for not a ton of money now. So this was a good, good build.